happy holidays, everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Ellis, and I'm out at Leerberg uh, this week putting the finishing touches on um, our putting the finishing touches on our Raising a Puppy DVD. Jeff came out and filmed a lot of the footage for the DVD uh, at our puppy development course in, at our school in California. And while he was out, he filmed a lot of the student question and answers at the end of each day. Uh, and so for this week's newsletter, uh, I thought we'd include some of the Q&As uh, on puppy rearing uh, from the class. Uh, the one you're about to see covers managing your puppy in the house. Uh, how do we create manners and preserve motivation in a young working puppy? I uh, hope you find it useful. It, it, it depends a little bit on where you are in the training and what you mean by free time, right? So with puppies, uh, little puppies, and especially puppies that I'm trying to kind of build motivation in, um, they don't get free time, like I don't cut them loose in the house and let them follow me around while I do chores and that kind of stuff, because they're gonna get in trouble and I'm gonna have to be, keep stopping them from doing that kind of stuff. Right, that, that, yeah, so a lot of it is, um, let's say, uh, if the puppy has enough energy to do the stuff that I want, then let's say I get up in the morning and I take my puppy out and do a training session, and then I set up a space in, in I have yards, I expend in the house, or I have a, a space in my yard, an outside space, so if it's gonna be for an extended period of time, or if um, uh, I don't wanna have to worry about the puppy having an accident or any of that kind of stuff, then I have a little puppy yard that I set up that's puppy safe, and there's chew things in there, and I, the puppy gets, it, it, it doesn't matter, right? So the, a lot of that is gonna be based on, it's based on your schedule and stuff. There isn't kind of a hard and fast rule for it. It's like, how much time do you have to train? Uh, do you, what other things do you have going on in your life? Do you have to go do stuff, right? And that kind of thing. And so the puppy is gonna, I'll throw the puppy in the, in the pen for a bit while I do other stuff. I'll bring the puppy out after, if the puppy's tired after that, maybe I bring the puppy in the house for a little bit, put it in an X-Pen or in its crate so it can take a nap or I put it in an X-Pen so while I work on the computer or whatever it is. And yeah, so the same thing. We'll talk, we'll talk a little bit about this afternoon when we do our management lecture, but when you introduce that, you, d you don't want it to be like a playpen for the dog. You don't want the dog bouncing off the sides of it and going crazy. This to, for me, I'm trying to create, it doesn't, I mean, it, I shouldn't say that. You, it, do, it depends on what you want from your dog. And so if you don't mind your dog, if, you, if your dog's calm in there, that's great. The X-Pen is perfect. It works just like a crate, only you can't leave them unattended in an X-Pen, right? Because if you go out of the room, they climb out of them, right? So little puppies can get out of X-Pens if they decide they want to. And once they learn to get out of them, then you're in trouble. Like every time you turn your back, they're hopping out. And so I use the X-Pen like um, for what I call inclusion work. So when I want my dog to be in the mix, feeling less confined than a crate, then I put the dog in the X-Pen. But I choose times to do that when the puppy's kind of mellow, right? because that's one of the ways my puppy gets introduced to my older dogs and things. They're not, it's not loose in the living room where my old dogs are laying on the bed and the puppy's gonna go over and jump on them and get bit in the head for jumping on the old dog while it's sleeping. So instead, I have my old dogs are out and laying on their dog beds in the living room and I put up the X-Pen at the end of the couch and I put a dog bed in there and I give the puppy a bone and the puppy gets to hang out and feel like, oh, look, I'm right in the midst of everything. They see the other dogs and that kind of stuff and they chill out and they kind of learn to hang out in the house as it were. If you have a puppy that's really easily stimulated, that continually wants to get up and jump against the side of it to go say hi to the other dog or whatever, then I say, eh, now now's not a good time for this kind of thing. Um, but you just need to manage their existence so they, you're not having to ride them for things. Like the more loose time your puppy has, the more likely they're gonna do something you don't want them to do. They go over and start chewing on the electrical cords or you know they're bouncing off the walls or you're having to tell them, no, don't do that, no, what, no, don't do that, and they start, they you turn your back and they chew something up or they have an accident and all that kind of stuff. And so I try to control their in-house interactions and then how much time they get to be a dog dog, like hang in the yard and walk around with the other dogs and play with the other dogs and just be a dog is somewhat dependent on, on the training part of it, right? And if the training is good, then they get more time to do that kind of stuff, it's fine. As long as I have the energy I want from the puppy as long as I have um, engagement and motivation to work, and then fine, it's okay if you, you hang out with the other dogs or do whatever. If I start to feel like, okay, you're way more into that than you are into me, 
right? Or every time I go to train, you seem kind of flat because you're busy running around the yard all day wearing, wearing yourself out, so every time I come to train with you, you don't have enough in the tank. Then I need to adjust that, right? And it's, it can be a certain type of puppy that's crazy, crazy motivated and super focused, and they get all kinds of free time, and they get to do lots of stuff. And then you have another kind of puppy that's like, I really need to control your life, otherwise you don't have anything to give me when it comes time for training, right? And so all those things we just need to sort of pay attention to as we go. But yeah, we're always striking a balance with our dogs between kind of what I would call uh, preparing them for livability, preparing them to be good members of the household and good pet dogs and that kind of stuff, and their ability to do the tasks that I want to train them to do, right? And so... There are compromises in that. If you bring a puppy in and you start making a whole bunch of manners and you teach them not to jump on the furniture and this kind of stuff and you're telling them, no, don't do this and that kind of stuff. Well, it, it'll, it, it'll affect those other things negatively, right? The puppy starts to go, yeah, I don't like to play anymore because every time I try to grab something, you, you get on me for it. You tell me I'm not supposed to do it. Or you're kind of a drag. You're the no person. Like, you're not the yes person, you're the no person, right? And I want to be the yes person in the beginning. I want the dog to go look at me and go like, hey, you're awesome. Everything that comes out of you is great. You play with me. These things are all fun. So how do I not have to tell you no in the early stages? There's a point where they have to learn no. There's a point where I have to be able to say, no, you can't do that. Stop it, right? But I don't want to be following them around when they're little going, mm, 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 don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Because then I'm a drag, and it affects our working relationship and everything else. So I control that. I have barriers, and I take them out only at certain times, and I control their energy so that I don't have to tell them no. And if I'm playing that well, then they kind of are around stuff. They're learning things, like they recognize the other dogs, they've been in the house, they, all that kind of stuff. But I haven't had to ride them for, for misbehavior over and over again. Yeah, and so. But, it's, but it's, an, it's a constant adjustment sometimes. And I've had puppies that are good working puppies that could be totally loose in the house all the time from the time they were little. Like I had a, a, an older dog she passed recently, but she was the craziest working dog I probably have ever had. She was a maniac, like absolute nut job, right? But she was completely and utterly chill in the house from the time she was a little puppy. Like I, we lived in a an apartment in New York City is 300 square feet, and at five months old, I could leave her loose in the apartment for eight hours, and you'd come back, and she'd be chilling. I'm like, what's up, right? I can, but you take her outside and pick something up, she could <laughs> lose her mind. She was, I mean, it was insane, but that's not normal at all. Like, you can't expect that to happen, right? Like, it was really weird. And then there are other dogs that are super, super busy. Like, getting them to settle down in the house is really hard. Yeah. And so then I have to be, I tend with those dogs, I wait until they're older to try to make that when we have a better relationship and we have more communication where we have obedience and I can tell you to lay down and do stuff like that. And it's better than trying to do it with them as a puppy. There are some really busy ones that just don't want to turn off. So we're kind of strike the balance. Sure thing. Yeah.